Io and welcome back. I am Jason with Imagineer Odyssey and I like to bring you RV related tips, reviews, and how to's based off of my experiences. And today I wanted to talk about your fresh water pump, specifically to talk about how your pump works. That way you know how your system works and if you need to troubleshoot it, you have a little bit of information to go with it. Now wait to the end because we're going to give you some troubleshooting tips, but first let's talk about how the pump works. Now inside of mine, I have a SureFlow water pump. My water pump pumps about three to three and a half gallons a minute at approximately 55 PSI or pounds per square inch. Now the way that my water pump works is it pulls water from the fresh water tank up to the pump and then from the pump, it pushes it out to the rest of the RV. Now how all that works in the middle of all that, that's what we're gonna get into. So how all that starts, you have a tube that comes from your fresh water tank and comes up to a filter slash strainer. What that's for is to keep any debris that may be inside of your tank from getting inside the pump and ruining the pump. Once it gets past there, the water gets into the pump and it has little diaphragms inside. Those diaphragms push in and out and that's what actually creates the pressure that pumps all the water. Also inside of there is a check valve to keep the water from going the wrong direction and it has an adjustment on it so that you can set pressure as well as a setting on there so that you can set a bypass. We'll get on to all of that in just a second. Now also part of your water system is your city water connection. And how that works is that it comes from the outside of your RV from your spigot or whatever on the outside and it pushes water in. Now you don't want that water going through your pump and back into your fresh water tank and that's where the check valve inside of your pump comes in. How that works is that when your water pump is running and pulling water from your tank, you have a little ball inside, and as the water comes in, it's gonna push the ball out of the way and go through the pump and get to the rest of your RV. Now, when you use your city water connection, that ball's sitting there and the water's coming the other direction, it's gonna push the ball and seal it and then start going up to the rest of the RV and preventing itself from going backwards through the pump and back into your tank. For the adjustments on the face of the pump, those are for the bypass and for your pressure. Typically, when you get your pump from the manufacturer, they're not going to need to be set. They're already done by the manufacturer and what the capability of the pump is and already tested and tuned. Another part about the pump is how does it actually turn on and run? Now, the pump itself is powered by 12 volt, which is off the battery of your RV. That way, you don't have to have shore power to have water, right? If you put water in your tank and you have 12 volt power off of your battery and your battery's good, then you'll be fine. You run the pump and you'll have water pressure inside of your RV. Now, just like anything else inside of your RV that runs off electricity, it needs to be protected. So on mine, I have a fuse in between the power coming into the pump and the pump itself. By the manufacturer's recommendation off of the label of the pump, it recommends that I have a 10 amp fuse. So that's what I have in the middle of it is a 10 amp fuse. So if something goes wrong with the pump or something goes wrong with your system, then the fuse will blow and cut off power to the pump and protect your RV. Now a little forewarning there. If it does blow the fuse, you need to do some troubleshooting. The fuse should not blow for just any reason at all especially this fuse because it's a 10 amp slow blow fuse. What that means is that it can handle a little higher than 10 amps for a short period of time and all that without blowing. So let's get to talking about some tips about your pump. First, we'll talk about some general tips and then we'll talk about some troubleshooting tips. First, for the general tips, let's talk about your fresh water tank. Now, I recommend that you flush out your fresh water tank periodically. Now, if you're gonna go to the campground or if you're filling it up from home or wherever that may be, you need to at least once a year to open up the drain to your fresh water tank. Now, mine happens to have a cap on the bottom of my RV and I take the cap off and it'll drain all the water out of the tank. Yours may have a slide or a pull handle or something like that. But nevertheless, if you fill it up with a little bit of water and let it slosh around and then go ahead and drain it and do that a couple of times at the beginning of each season, then if there's any sediment at the bottom of your tank, it should flush that out or at least get most of it. The next tip is the little filter strainer that's right before your pump. At least mine has one. It's this little clear container and it screws off and inside of it, it has this little mesh screen. Also at the beginning of every season, it's good to take that off and clean that screen. Now be very, very careful with that screen because it is delicate. 
Now take a really soft bristle toothbrush and kind of lightly brush that screen as you're rinsing it out. Once you get it all rinsed out, it'll look nice and clean. You can put that back on and you should have all the water flow that you need. And then the last general tip is that when you fill up your fresh water tank, make sure you use some kind of filter on your water hose. Don't just hook up the water hose and start pumping it directly into your tank. Put some kind of water filter on your hose. That way, whatever water that you put into your tank will be as clean as it can possibly be. Now that leads me to troubleshooting tips. If you don't have any water flow, then you need to check to make sure you have power to your pump. Check that fuse and make sure that fuse is good. That way you know that you have power going to your pump. Now inside of your power distribution panel, that's where all your circuit breakers and stuff like that are, you may have a fuse for that pump there also. So check that fuse as well. If the pump is coming on and you still don't have any water pressure, then take off that strainer to make sure that it's not dirty and restricting water flow. Now for a tip about the pump itself, if you turn on your pump and you're getting little to no water flow or the pump is shaking like crazy, it just doesn't sound smooth. Then on the face of your pump, you can take a little Allen screw and you can turn the pressure setting on it. Now, as mine is made by SureFlow, I looked up the manufacturer's details about it and it told me that I could take the little set screw and I could turn it counterclockwise. Now, what that's gonna do is reduce the water pressure. Now that's okay in this case because we wanna make sure that we're not over pressurizing. What I would do from there is turn it about a quarter of a turn counterclockwise and then get the pump to start. Now to do that is I turn the pump on and then I go over to my water faucet at my sink and I'll turn it on slightly just to let it run really slow. That way the pump will activate. From there, I'll go back to the pump and when the pump activates, I'll turn that screw clockwise an eighth to a quarter of a turn, wait for the pump to come back on and see if the pump has settled. If it has not, I'll go another eighth to a quarter turn until it levels out. You'll hear the difference. It'll go from this real rumbly shaking sound to a nice smooth settled sound. Now you want to make sure that the pump is cutting off, yet the sound or the smoothness of the pump is right. Now the reason for going those eighth and quarter turns as you're turning up the pressure is to get right to the moment when it's sounding good, go about another eighth of a turn and then leave it there. The reason for that is that you don't want to allow the pump to be able to overpressurize itself, which comes into the bypass section. The bypass section of itself is a little set screw on there that you don't want to mess with. The reason for that is because a manufacturer is going to set that so that the pump itself will bypass and not overpressurize and mess up your RV. So make sure that you're not going to tune that one itself. So that's about the overview of the pump and how mine works. If you have a different type of pump or you have other troubleshooting experiences, please leave those down in the comments below because not everybody may have the same kind of pump that I do or even the same kind of pump you do. But if we share those down in the comments below, we'll all get informed together. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please click on the subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up for the video and click on the bell so that you get notified for any other amazing videos to come from Imagine Your Odyssey. And until the next time, enjoy your water, enjoy your RV trips, and God bless.